In this video, I want to show you how to add new vendors, how to enter payables invoices, and how to include those invoices into a check run in Dynamics GP. The first thing I want to do is create a new vendor. So to do that, I'm going to go to Cards, Purchasing, and Vendor. This will bring up the vendor maintenance screen. I'm going to enter my new vendor right here. I have a naming convention where I use some of the letters from the vendor's name and then three digits at the end to allow for duplicates. So I'm just going to fill out the vendor's name here and one thing I want to do is assign it to a particular class. So I'm going to look up my class IDs. And The reason I want to do this is that it makes data entry a lot easier because if I scroll back or link back to the class ID I can see that there's a number of default values that are going to be populated into the vendor record when I create it. I can also use class ID to select certain classes, certain vendors for reporting. It's also easy to update. If I want to update a particular attribute about a class of vendors, I can just do it at the class ID level and then roll it down to all the vendors. So in this case, if I wanted to, I assign it to this class ID, but I can always go into the options here and maybe I want to change some of the values that were defaulted in from the class ID. I can do that. For example, if I want to look up payment terms and select a different one, I could easily do that. That looks fine to me. I'll hit OK. And the final thing I want to do is set up a primary address, an address ID. And I can just name that whatever I want to. And then I can enter the address right here. I can continue to do that. And when I have all the information about that vendor in, I'll just save it. And now I've got a new vendor. So the next thing I want to do is use this vendor in a payable transaction to create an invoice in my system. So to do that, I'll go to Transactions, Purchasing, Transaction Entry. It brings up the Payables Transaction Entry screen here. And I'm going to enter an invoice for this new vendor. I can enter a description if I wish to. I could put it in a batch if I wanted to, but I'm going to post this online real time, so I'll skip the batch at this time. I'm going to look up my new vendor ID. Here it is right there. When I do that, you can see that it defaults a lot of the information from the vendor ID. The document number will be the vendor's invoice number, so I'll enter the invoice number here, and then I'll put the amount in here. What you always want to do is check the distributions because the distributions will default off from the vendor's maintenance screen and if I wanted to add additional distributions I could do that here or I could change the distributions but I'm going to select these defaults hit OK and I'm basically done I'm going to post this online now let's include that in a check run there are a couple of ways to enter a check batch in GP what I'm going to use is I'm going to go to Transactions, Purchasing, and use the Edit Check Batch. This will allow me to set up a batch ID and also select the vendors and the invoices I want to include in that check batch. So let me enter the batch here. It's going to ask, ask me to add a batch. I want to add the batch. I'll do that. I can add additional information in the comment if I want to. I will have to select a checkbook ID. So I'm going to look up a checkbook ID. This is going to be the checkbook from which the checks will be written. I'll save that. And when I tab off that, it's going to show me all the open invoices by vendor in my system. So let's scroll down and look at that new vendor that we just put in. Here's the vendor right here. You can see it's automatically populated with that amount. So I'm going to select that. And then maybe there's some other vendors that I want to pay as well. So I'm going to select this vendor here and you can see there are a number of invoices. Now maybe I don't want to pay all of those so I'm going to unselect one of them here. And then I'm going to also drill down because I want to change this amount here. I'm scheduled to pay $1,095 but I only want to pay $500 at this time. So what I want to do is I want to change that amount that I'm going to include on the check. So I'm going to edit check button right here and what it's going to do is allow me to edit the payment that I was going to make to this vendor Midwest accounts. I'm going to hit the apply button this show me all open invoices and credit memos for this particular vendor plus it'll show me the items that are already marked and here this is the invoice I wanted to change. 
the amount available, the amount remaining on this particular invoice was 1095 but I only want to pay 500 of it. So I'm going to override that amount here. You can see that the check amount will now be $500 for this invoice and it will leave the remaining amount in payables. So I'm going to hit OK and save that payment. My total batch up here for the checks will be adjusted based on that adjustment I just made. What I like about this window is that in one screen basically it shows you all the vendors that have invoices in payables. It will show you by vendor which ones are in and open and what the amounts are and the amount to be paid in this particular check run. So let's assume this is the way that I want this particular check and now it's time to print the checks. So I'm going to hit print checks here. It will bring up this payables check dialog box. It will allow me to select the check number for the next pre-printed form if I have those. And it will allow me to check, choose the check format that I have. You can see there's a number of, him, of them that come with the system. I can modify these to fit my standard check stock. So I'm going to print these. I'll print them to the screen here. This is just the standard printout. This is what it would look like on the check. Let's get out of there. So now I've got the option after I've printed the checks I have options. I can post those checks or I can reprint them. Maybe a check was ruined I need to reprint a check or maybe I made a mistake altogether I can avoid those checks. Or I could print a stub alignment. So I'm going to just post those checks because they're fine with me. I could also choose to process this later, meaning it's not going to do anything at this time. It'll allow me to go back and then select the process that I want to execute. But at this time, I'm going to post the checks. So I'll select that and hit process. Now when I do that, it's going to process all those checks. It'll record the checks to the check register. It's going to clear payables for those invoices that were included. It's also going to do all the GL transactions behind those events. So to get started with payables in Dynamics GP, it's really pretty easy. I do a minor setup, then I do vendors, I enter the payables invoices, I include those invoices in the checks, and then I print the checks out. 